Okay, we will talk about skeletal uh, system. Okay, remember system consists of organs, right? Consists of organs. Okay, now for the skeletal system, the organ is called bones. Okay, so the organ is called bones. Okay, so in general, the organs of skeletal systems are called the bones. And there are 206 bones in the skeletal system. And each bone actually has name. So therefore, there are actually 206 organs okay, in the skeletal system. And each organ which is bone has their own name like for example uh, there is a bone called the humerus okay uh, radius ulna there is a femur for example okay. so there are 206 of them and we will learn this 206 bone later in chapter 7 and 8. Okay. So in chapter 6 today, we will learn the bones as a tissue. Remember organs consist of tissue. Okay, and there are four types of tissue in human Body. Now, when we talk about bones as an organ, it has several tissue in it. The most common one is called the bone tissue, which is actually this is a solid connective tissue. Remember there are several types of connective tissue. One of them is a solid connective tissue which is bone. Uh, bone as an organ also has the cartilage on it. Okay? So cartilage is another connective tissue. Uh, bones also has blood on it. Right? So it has blood connective tissue. Uh, bone also receive the nervous control, so it also have nervous tissue in it. Okay. And of course bone is covered or protected by the epithelial tissue. So there are several tissues that present in the bone. But today in chapter 6, we mostly focus in bone as a tissue. Okay, so bone tissue, which is solid connective tissue. bone tissue which is solid connective tissue okay now remember the characteristic of connective tissue is consists of cell uh, and matrix okay that's the characteristic of connective tissue it has cells and matrix now for the bones of course it consists of cell 
Okay, bone is a tissue. It has cells on it. A tissue is a group of cells. So the cells that present in the bone, there are four types. There are million of cells, but only divided into four types in the bone. The first one is called the osteogenic, eh? osteogenic cell. This is actually the stem cell that produce other bone cell. Okay. These osteogenic cells actually will produce the second type of cell in the bone. It's called the osteoblast. Okay. So osteoblast is the second type of cell in the bone. And this osteoblast has a function to build build the bone which is build the bone matrix okay so this is the one that build the matrix and then the third one okay when the osteoblast getting older then it's changed into cell called the Osteocyte. Okay. So this is the bone cell that maintain the compact bone. Okay, so maintains our bones. And then the last one is called the osteoclast. This osteoclast is the one that we can say is destroy the bones. Okay, by resorption Disruption of matrix. So it's actually removing the matrix from the bones. So that's the functions and the name of the bone cells. Again, okay, osteogenic cell is the stem cell that will produce the osteoblast. The osteoblast will develop into osteoclast, I mean osteocyte, okay, especially in the compact bone. And the osteoclast uh, is, is actually coming from white blood cell. So osteoclast is actually white blood cell that stay in the bone tissue. Okay. So the osteoblast will build the bones. It will make the bone harder. Okay. The osteoclast is the one that destroy the bone. It will make the bones become fragile. Okay, you're gonna see these functions again later. Now the matrix. Okay, remember connective tissue consists of cell and matrix. The matrix of the bone tissue. Okay, remember matrix consists of ground substances. Okay, and the fibers. Okay, ground substances and fiber. And we know bone is a solid connective tissue. So the ground substances will be solid. Okay, remember there are three types of ground substances, solid, gel, 
and liquid. Okay, so the ground substance, uh, substance is for the bone tissue is a solid ground substances which is made of calcium. This is a very important mineral in our body. Okay. Calcium it will make the bone become solid or harder. So this is related to this. Okay. Harder bone is because of more calcium in it. It's become solid bone. And then the fibers, remember there are three types of fiber, reticular, elastic, and collagen fibers, right? For the bone tissue, the fiber will be the stronger, the strongest fiber, which is the collagen fiber. Okay, so mostly bone tissue will have collagen fibers. So it has calcium for hardness and it also has a collagen fiber for strength. Okay, it will make the bone become stronger. So the calcium and the collagen fibers are the matrix of the bone. That will make bones become hard okay, and also strong. And there are four cells. Osteogenic cell will make the osteoblast. Osteoblast will build the bone. And then osteocyte, this is the one that will maintain the bones. And osteoclast, this is the one that will uh, destroy the bones, okay, break the bone. So how to remember it? Okay, that's easy for the the one that build the bone, it start with B, right? Osteoblast. Just remember Bob. Okay, Bob the builder. Okay, if you watch the children's uh, movie or TV, there is a Bob the builder. Bob the builder. Yes, I can. Something like that. Okay. So osteoblast. This is Bob the builder. This is the one that build the bone, make the bone become harder and also strong bob the builder now who destroy the bone the one that make the bone become fragile it is start with c right osteoclast so i usually use cat eh, to remember the name so cat if you have cat at home it will destroy a lot of things at your house right your uh, your coach and other you know uh, bad for example. So this is the osteoclast, cat, the destroyer. Okay, so it's very important to remember the name and also the functions. And I, I will show you how to make it easy to remember the names and also the function of these uh, different cells in the bone tissue. Okay, now what is the functions of the bones? Functions of bone. Okay, and you now bone is a very solid, very hard and strong organs or tissue. Therefore, the first functions will be for support. Okay, and protect, soft tissue or organs. Like for example, our brain is a very soft organs. It will be protected by bone, which is the cranium. Our lungs, our heart, is very soft organs so they will be protected by the bones which is our rib cage okay so this is the first functions of the bone which is supporting and protecting soft organ the second functions 
Yeah, the second function will be for muscle attachment. Okay, so remember we have three types of muscle. One of them is called the skeletal muscle. And this is the one that attaches to the bones, to the skeleton. And by doing so, this muscle will be able to move our body. Okay, so this is for body movement. Okay, so the bone and muscle will work together to move our body. The third function will be for storage of mineral, okay, mainly the calcium. So the calcium will be stored in the bone. And again, this is the mineral that will make bone become hard. Okay, harder. So this is the one that contribute the hardness of the bone. Okay, so the calcium will increase the hardness of the bone. So people that do not have, do not like calcium, do not like milk, for example, when they are getting older, their bones become softer okay, because they actually do not build their bones when they are younger. So when they get older, their bones become softer compared to, uh, to the people that drink milk or take calcium. Number four, eh, the fourth function of the bone is for what? Blood cell production. Okay. Eh? So blood cell production. Okay. So red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelets, which is all type of blood cell, are produced in area is called the red bone marrow. in the bones. So bone have space, uh, it's called the red bone marrow or RBM. Uh, and this RBM is the place for making all types of blood cell, red blood cell, white blood cell, and also the uh, platelets. Last one, Okay. The last function of the bone is for energy storage. Okay, which is actually some fat will be stored in the area of the bone is called the yellow bone marrow. So yellow bone marrow is for energy storage. Red bone marrow is for blood cell production. So these are the functions of the bones. Now bone as a tissue Okay, because it's kind of confusing. Bone sometimes is a tissue, sometimes it is also an organ. So they, they have the same uh, general name. So if we talk about bone as a tissue, there are two types. Okay? There are two types of bone tissue. Okay, two types of bone tissue. Okay? The first one is called compact bone.
the second bone tissue is called spongy bone. Okay, the so compact bone is really compact, really hard, and spongy bone, they have a lot of space okay, inside that bone. That space is actually the red bone marrow. Okay, so the red bone marrow is located mostly in the spongy bone, and this is the place for blood cell production. Okay, now how the compact bone look like? So if we have bones, let's say we get long bone like this. Okay. So the middle part over here mostly consists of compact bone. Okay, so this is the location of compact bone, which is in the middle part of the bone. Okay. And the spongy bone mostly located at the ends of the bones as an organ. So spongy bones mostly located here. Okay, in the end area of the bones. So that's the place for spongy bone and compact bone mostly in the middle part of the bone. Now, if we cut this bone, okay, cross section, and look under the microscope, okay, then you're going to see a lot of compact bone tissue in this cross-section. Let's say like this, when we cut it. Okay, so this can uh, give you this picture. And then the middle one, this is the central canal. Okay, this is the canal and usually used by the blood vessels and also by the uh, nervous system. Okay, the neurons that will go to this bone tissue. Around that, there will be structure look like a circle, it's a circular structure. A lot of circular structure. And you did see last time under the microscope, which is part of this bone cross section. Okay, so each of this unit, circular unit, is called osteons. Okay, so this is one osteon, this is another osteon, this is another osteon. So basically, compact bone consists of osteo. Okay, just remember that. That's the unit of compact bone. Okay. Osteo is the unit of compact bone. Okay. Now, if we make this osteo bigger, I can use another. Uh, slide over here. Okay, this is osteon, osteon, osteon. So we're gonna take one osteon. Okay, again it's gonna be the central canal. Okay, and then the circular line okay this circular line is called lamellae okay lamellae okay. and then on that circular lines they will have space okay, 
So this is space, 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 space. Okay, all the way. Okay, this space is called La Cuna. I, you can say this is lake. Okay. And then inside of each space, there will be cell. This yellow color for cell. So you see that one? This is connected tissue the cell are separated they are not connected right so they are separated and between them there is matrix okay so this is the cell of this compact bone and this cell eh, the cell in the compact bone are osteocytes Okay, so the older cell. So osteocyte, this is the one that will maintain the compact bone. Okay. So the middle part, the, all of this is a matrix. Okay. That consists of the calcium mineral as a ground substances and collagen fiber. Okay, so this matrix will be hard and strong. Okay, the hardness is coming from the calcium. The strength is coming from the collagen fiber. Now, between the lake, between the lacuna, is it connected by... Oh, I'm going to use the blue color to make connection. Between one leg to another leg, it is connected by canal. Okay. And this canal is called the canaliculi, okay. which is canal that connect between leg. So this is how the uh, compact bones look like okay so you see under the microscope again compact bone will be consist of unit called osteon okay and then if we make the osteon bigger like this then in the each osteon there will be central canal with lamellae okay and then there will be lake or lacuna that has osteocyte in in lacuna okay and then lacuna will be connected to one another with canaliculi and the 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 basic matrix of these osteons will be calcium and collagen fiber that will give this compact bone the hardness and the strength so the compact bone will be very hard and also strong Okay, that's the uh, compact bone, how it looks like. Now, how about the spongy bone? Okay, spongy bones. Okay, remember again, if we make this spongy bone mostly at the end of this long bone. So this is the location of spongy bone. Now, if we see it closely under the microscope, okay, if we take this area, then there will be structure that look like antler. Okay, like a deer antler. So this each of this unit is called trabecula. Okay. And then the area between the trabecula, I'm gonna make it 
red color over here. Okay, the area between trabecula is called red bone marrow. And this is the place for blood cell production. Okay, so blood cell production is occurring in this red bone marrow, which is space between trabecula. Now, if we cut this trabecula, let's say like this, and cut in cross section, then we we'll see structure like this. Okay. <clears throat> So this structure will have a lot of cell that build the bone. Remember, this is Bob, the builder, which is the osteoblast so osteoblast mostly located in the spongy bone while the osteoclast will be located in the compact bone there will be also the osteoclast on it okay, in the spongy bone okay so most of the osteoclast will also located in the uh, spongy bone so this is how the spongy bone look like if we compare with the compact bone again compact bone mostly has the osteocytes while the spongy bone mostly have the osteoblast and osteoclast Okay, that's the difference between two types of bone tissue, the compact bones and the spongy bone. Now we will learn a little bit about bone as an organ. So we're going to talk about bone as an tissue bone as an organ right now we're going to talk about bone as an organs okay so there are five type of bones in our body as an organ the first one okay five type of bone as organs the first one is called long bones. And from the name, you know, these bones will be long, yeah, shaped like a, uh, like a stick or long bones. So maybe look like this. Okay. So like our humerus, our femur, this is a type of long bones second one is called short bones so the bones are short yeah. example is in our wrist we have actually eight bones over there so if it is our hand we have eight bones in our wrist. Okay. So these wrist bones over here. Uh, 
call short bone. Right, so there are eight wrist bones. Okay, all of them are type of short bones. The third type of bone is called flat. Flat bone. Okay. Example of flat bone is the hip bone. So our hip bone. Okay. So this hip bones over here is flat. Okay. This is femur which is long bones. Okay. And the uh, fourth type of bone is called uh, irregular bones. Example is vertebrae. Okay, so we have 26 vertebrae or backbone, and all of them have different shape. So therefore, they are irregular bones. And the last one is called the sesamoid bone. This is bones that's located in our knee. is called the kneecap or patella. So kneecap is a type of sesamoid bone. So these are the five different type of bone based on shape okay, as an organ. Okay, next one we will learn a little bit about the long bones. So if we see the long bones, what are part of this long bone? So we're going to learn about part of a long bones. So long bone has three main parts. And the longest part over here in the middle This part is called the shaft of the bone or diaphysis. Okay, the shaft of the bone is called the diaphysis. And the end of the bones, the end of the bones over here. is called the epiphysis okay and then between the epiphysis so this is also epiphysis okay between epiphysis and diaphysis this is an area is called the meta -physis. okay so there are three area of the long bone epiphysis metaphysis and diaphysis and diaphysis is the long part of the shaft of the uh, long bones. Now, we, are, we have learned that mostly the diaphysis consists of compact bone. Okay? So the tissue on this part is mostly compact bone. The metaphysis and epiphysis mostly consists of the spongy bone. Okay, so the tissue is a spongy bone tissue in the epiphysis and metaphysis. Okay, 
And then this is very important. If we're still young, we're still growing, our bone still able to become longer. It is due to the area between the metaphysis and epiphysis that actually grow the bone. And this area is called the growth plate. Growth plate. Okay. So the area between metaphysis and epiphysis that will make the bones become longer and we have become taller and it's called a growth plate and because this is mostly located in the epiphysis area another name for growth plate is epiphyseal plate So this is the area between metaphysis and epiphysis that has a lot of cell that multiply. Okay? The one that will make the bones become longer. Okay? And then as individual, we are become color right, with this growth now when we order this growth plate is actually gone eh, become epiphyseal line eh? it is not plate anymore it's become line and there will be no growing after that so this epiphyseal lines usually develop when the uh, women or girls reach 21 years old. Okay, so this is for girl. Okay, girl reach 21 years old, they usually will not growing anymore. So this is the average age of girl that will not become taller anymore. They stuck okay, after 21 years old. For boy okay, or female, they still be able to grow until 25 years old. Okay, so this is the reason why sometimes, you know, during the... Uh, elementary school or maybe middle school mostly the girls will be growing faster because they get maturity faster and then after that after high school college and etc the boy will mostly pass the growth of the girl so now the boy is become taller and taller when they you know uh, maybe high school, senior, junior, or the college ages. Okay, so that's the uh, area right, between the epiphysis and metaphysis that's used for growing. It's called the growth plate or epiphyseal plate. When the girls reach or the female reach 21 years old, that plate become line and the girls will stop growing. Uh, for the male, it can reach until 25 years old. After the 25 years old, the plates become line, and the boy usually also will not growing taller anymore. Okay, so that's the part of the long bone. We will talk about bone formation, how the bone is formed or made.
the osteogenesis, the formations of bone. There are two types of osteogenesis. The first one is called the intramembranous ossification. The second type of osteogenesis is called the endochondral ossification. Okay. The intramembranous ossifications will form flat bones. So flat bone is made by intramembranous ossification process. So flat bone like our skull is a flat bone. Uh, there is breast bone is called the sternum. Sternum is also flat bone. Our hip uh, is a flat bone. It is made by this intramembranous ossification okay, during our uh, embryonic embryonic development in our uh, mother wombs and then for the endochondral ossification this is the one that forms the other type of bone okay long bones short bones and irregular bones mostly will also produce by endochondral ossification okay so two type of ossification or bone formation the first one is intramembranous ossification the second one is the endochondral ossification now how that process happenings we're gonna start with the endochondral uh, ossification because it's easier to uh, learn or to see the process so endochondral ossification is start with template so the template of the bones will be made during our embryonic development like for example our humerus which is the bones on the upper arm it starts develop okay, by cartilage so this is cartilage template okay and then after that the osteoblast will carry a lot of calcium so calcium will develop this template and then this area the middle part then become harder okay so this harder part become the soft platter okay and then the calcium will also be deposited in the area between epiphysis and metaphysis. This is gonna be secondary ossification center. Okay, the, the middle one over here on the shaft is the primary ossification center. And the secondary ossification center located between epiphysis and metaphysis. This is the reason why the shaft of the bones will be harder because it's developed earlier. While the epiphysis and metaphysis, they are become harder later. Especially when we get really old, this area 
okay? the end area of the bones is become solid just like a, a compact bone okay? so when they when this one develop okay, become compact bones over here okay some harder bones they still have the cartilage left in the middle between epiphysis and metaphysis. This is the growth plate. Okay, so the growth plate is actually cartilage that consists of cell that will divide. Okay, so this is growth plate, which is cartilage. It's finally become solid also when the girl reached 21 years old and the boy reached 25 years old. And the end of the bone over here, I'm going to use blue color, will also stay as a cartilage. Okay, so the end bone, it will stay as a cartilage. And this actually will help us to reduce the friction between bone. So the bone is actually connected with another bone, and then it will make us able to move. So each of these bones will have cartilage at the end. Okay? So that cartilage is called the articular cartilage. Cartilage that used for joint. Articulate mean joint. Okay, so this is the development of long bone. Okay, it's made through the process for the endochondrial ossification. And it always start with a template. There's always template for the uh, long bone and short bone. Okay, they're made by endochondrial ossification. For the intramembranous ossification, there is no template, no template. Okay, so basically, the ossifications will just go to the space that available. So it will make the bones become uh, flat. So ossifications okay. and mostly the ossifications will be happenings at the side of the bones and peripheral side okay it is the reason why the feral cell side will be compact will be hard but the middle area over here Okay. They mostly gonna be spongy. Okay, so flat bone mostly have the spongy bone tissue compared to the long bone. Okay. It is the reason why the bones, the bone that produce the red blood cell, mostly the flat bones like our hips for example our hip is the main area for making red blood cell because hip bone is flat and flat bone has a lot of red bone marrow because they have the spongy type of bone okay so this is how the bone uh, are forms during our embryonic development and again just remember for the endochondrial is start with a template if we're making a cake so endochondrial is just like uh, like making cupcake right so you have to have a template which is cup okay so in making cupcake it is similar to making this endochondrial ossification there is a template there is a uh, space 
eh, that will shape like the bones that will be formed eh, like the humerus is long bone when it is developed it will be template for that humerus okay so how about the intramembranous ossifications it is just like making the uh what's it called the the cake uh, that do not template is uh, like pancake right so pancake usually just just throw here you know the 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 ingredients or the you know the, the thing that you're gonna make a pancake on the pan and it will be flat it will be flat cake but the cupcake uh, it will be like the cup that you put or the template that you use for making that cake so this is that you know just uh, for uh, examples of similarity between the formations and the control ossification and intramembranous ossification uh, with making uh, cake. So at least you know what happened during our embryonic uh, uh, development. So the long bones will have a lot of templates in it, but the intramembranous ossification will not have template for uh, making the Okay, so let's say if this is our body, okay, so this is humerus, for example, there will be template for making humerus. There is a radius and ulna, there will be also template, and they will have the wrist bones carpal, metacarpal, digit, they all will have template. Okay. Uh, for the flat bone, like this skull, okay, this flat bone, this is long bone, there will be no template for uh, flat bone during the uh, embryonics and developments in our, in our mother wombs. So this is the formation of bone, uh, whether long bone or short bone. Now we're going to talk about bone growth. Okay. Because there are two types, which is growth in length okay so this is the one that make us taller and growth in thickness in width yeah, it will make the bone uh, thicker but it's not longer so growth in length we mentioned before is located in the area it's called the growth plate okay so this area over here between epiphysis okay and metaphysis okay, this middle one is diaphysis okay. this is an area over here it's called the growth plate okay. or epiphyseal plate that will make our bones become longer so in this area in this growth plate there are three types of zones or area. The first one is called the zone of resting cartilage. So mostly it's gonna be cartilage cell because this cell still be able to divide. And then the next one is called the zone of proliferations 
cartilage. Okay, so this consists of cell that dividing. And then after that, some cell after it's dividing is become solid a little bit because the calcium will be placed on that zone. And that zone is called zone of hypertrophic. Okay, hypertrophic cartilage. Okay. And then the last ones will be the, the zones that become solid. Okay, become part of this bone plateau. Okay, so it's going to be push the bones in the middle become longer. Okay, on the top, on the bottom become going to the... Uh, uh, bottom area so the shaft become longer and longer so that zones that really close to the shaft area is called the zones of calcified particles okay. so this zone will have a lot of calciums deposit on it okay. so it's become harder so this is the harder zones and later the harder zone become part of the crisis and the bones become uh, longer this is how the bones growing in length bones growing in width or thickness Let's say we have this long bone. Okay, you're going to cross sections on the diaphysis. And we're going to see this again. A lot of osteons in it. Okay. So when the osteon is growing so on the side over here it's going to be adding the thickness of the bone so the bone become thicker and thicker it's actually going to the side okay? so this is how the bones uh, become thicker by additions of osteons Okay, so formation of osteon. So osteon will be growing to the side. That will make the bone become thicker. Okay, so when we young, for example, our bone is relatively skinnier. Eh? Uh, there is going to be developed into thicker, thicker bone by adding the osteon. Okay, so that's the uh bone to growth in thickness or in width okay the last one will be the conditions that affecting the bones growth so factors affecting bones growth okay first of course our nutrition our food okay. So in order to make our bone growing and also become harder, we need 
calcium in our diet. So calcium is really important nutrition for bone growth. The second, our nutrition also requires to have vitamin D. Okay. So this vitamin D will increase calcium reabsorption in our intestine. So if we eat food that have a lot of calcium, then we also need vitamin D in order to increase the reabsorption of calcium that we eat into our blood and finally will be delivered into the bone. So again, calcium will make uh, bones become harder eh? and also growing taller. We also need vitamin C okay, for bone growth. And this is the one that used for making other matrix, which is collagen fiber. Okay, so the solid calcium, eh, it actually makes the ground substances become harder. The vitamin C is needed to make the bone become stronger, which is formations of the collagen fibers in the bones. There are some other vitamins that also needed for bone growth, eh, vitamin K and B, especially B12. This is needed for protein synthesis. Okay, so fiber over here, collagen fiber, mostly made of protein. So the vitamin K and B12 also needed for making this collagen fiber and some other products. Second is hormones. This hormone is produced by our endocrine glands. The first hormone needed is called growth hormone. Okay, growth hormone. It is produced by anterior pituitary gland, which is the gland that's located under our brain. Okay, this is in close to our brain. So this growth hormone is really important for growing of the bone. The second hormones is called calcitonin. Okay. This is produced by our thyroid gland. And this calcitonin is needed to stimulate osteoblasts. Okay, remember osteoblast is the one that build the bone. So this osteoblast activity will be stimulated by the calcitonin. So these hormones are really important to make our bone become harder and the growing uh, taller and thicker. Okay. And the last one is exercise. Okay, especially weight bearing. Okay. It will make the calcium the positions become faster and uh, what you call is a uh, compact. Okay, so when we do exercise with bearing, just like you put the sand on the uh, on the back, right? uh, if you push that with you know you push that. 
it will be more sense will be put on that back but if you don't push it uh, it's gonna the sand is not that solid yeah so that's the reason why uh, the same like your bones if you do the weight bearing then more calcium will actually deposit it into the bone and the bone become harder okay? so that's the some factor that increase the bone growth now what happened if growth hormones okay remember this is the very important hormone used for growing what happened if the growth hormone is produced too little it's called the hypo uh, of growth hormone okay. when it is happening then the individual become very short it's called dwarfism okay it's not enough growth hormone causing the individual become dwarf what happened if the birth hormone is produced too much? Eh? It's called the hyper secretions of growth hormone. Then the individual become giant. Eh? This disorder or abnormality is called giantism. Okay, it's a very tall individual. It's telling us all oh, that individual actually produces too growth hormone maybe there is a tumor uh, uh, on their brains on the anterior pituitary gland that causing him to produce more growth hormone than normal okay i think that's all for this uh, bones issue uh, we will continue in the classroom uh, on the uh, bones uh, remodeling, which is when our bones broken, then we still have the ability to remodel or to uh, recover okay, the broken bones. So our bone is actually will be able to uh, develop will be able to cure from uh, broken bones so that process is called the bone remodeling and repair okay. so our uh, our bone have the ability to remodel and repair the broken bone uh, i think uh, we finish uh, for today i'll see you next time i'm gonna